Good afternoon. And on behalf of the 175th Anniversary Committee, we welcome you to our 175th celebration here at St. Paul of Apollyanna. And so we will begin our presentation. <clears throat> While driving in the country on Church Road and turning onto Apollyanna Road, many have been surprised to see this beautiful church. Many of you have been blessed to grow up in this church and are very familiar with our congregation and house of worship. God has been gracious to us through the last past 175 years. And this afternoon, we would like you to share, we would like to share a little of our heritage with you. Who built this church? Where did they come from? When did these things happen? And what prompted them? Hopefully we'll answer most of these questions. A house cleaning note. Before we begin, <clears throat> we've used numerous reference materials and the spellings of names and dates vary a lot. So we chose one. Sons and daughters were named after their parents and aunts and uncles. We took the liberty to adding Roman numerals behind a few names to help identify them better. We ask your forgiveness for our wrong choices and for mispronunciations. So come, bring your imagination and join us on this walk through the past. Let's start at the early 1800s, Germany. Our founding fathers and most of their wives were born and lived in the Providence of Lipidetmo. It was a small Providence about 200 miles west and a little south of Berlin. At this time, Germany was not a unified country. Lipidetmo was in Austrian territory. Frederick II was Emperor of Prussia and there was almost constant warfare between Austria and Prussia. The people of Lipodetmo were reminded of these wars con constantly, for within their small providence, wars lo was located garrisons in which the regiment of soldiers were always stationed. And the area was described as a pleasant country with good soil and mild climate. By 1815, after almost 20 years of warfare, Napoleon, Emperor of France, had conquered almost all of Europe. However, in 1815 in Belgium, the Battle of Waterloo raged. Napoleon was, was defeated. 45,000 soldiers lay fallen within an area of three square miles. The German people were very much disappointed in the peace treaties which followed and Germany became 38 separate and independent states instead of a strong unified empire which the people had so much hope for. No security, no freedom, no room. In the same time period, America is a new expanding nation. Dangers lurked on the frontier. Black Hawk, war chief of the Sauk Indians, surrendered in 1832. But America offered freedom, the possibility for individuals to own land, a place where families could grow, be together and worship as one desired. Immigration to this land was very enticing. Putting things in perspective here in America, in 1801, Thomas Jefferson became the first president of America. While our founders were growing up, Illinois became a state in 1818, just 29 years before our ancestors' arrival. In 1825, the Erie Canal was finished in the state of New York. This connected the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes. Water travel was faster than traveling over land. Remember, transportation is only by walking or animals, horses, oxen, mules, etc., and wagons. Just 10 years, in 1837 before our ancestors' arrival, John Deere invented the plow, an essential tool needed for farming. By 1841, William Harrison was only the ninth president, and the first telegraph was installed in Eastern America in 1844, just three years prior to their arrival. Now, you really need your imagination. Visualize this era. There is no electricity. That means no lights, no refrigeration, TVs, radios, computers, none of that electronics. No telephone, no horseless carriages, no automobiles, 
No rubber tires, no hard surface roads, not even gravel roads, just dirt paths. No trains here in the Midwest, no gas furnaces to heat your home, just a wood-burning stove for cooking and heating the home. No running water in the home, no indoor bathroom. The towns of Davis and Rock City did not exist at this time. Newspapers were only in the large cities. How's your imagination doing in visualizing this time period? Are you ready to go back to the good old days? Of the recorded 15 families that are recognized as starting this church, eight of them crossed the Atlantic Ocean and the eastern United States and arrived here in northern Illinois in 1847. Exactly how they got to Illinois is a bit of a mystery. At least one family recorded they came from Milwaukee, so we probably can assume they came by the Erie Canal and the Great Lakes. Some came from Missouri, so we assume they came through New Orleans and up the Mississippi River. Those not recorded leave us all to our imaginations. A little south of the present village of Davis, the village of Rock Run Mills was started in 1835. Mount Pleasant, now known as Epliana, in 1836 to 1837, Joshua Blackmore and Leonard Lee hired Thomas Turner to build a grist mill. A few months later, they sold it to Conrad Epley. Conrad named the village after re by reversing the two parts of his wife's name, Anna Epley. Some stories say it was his daughter's name. The Epleys encouraged a number of German immigrants from the Lipidemo area to settle around the mill. This is part of the reason our forefathers settled here. The first post office, <clears throat> was opened at Rock Run Mills in 1841 and remained there for seven years. And then the post office was moved to Jamestown, which is southwest of the present village of Rock City. Jamestown was nicknamed Grabal. It was told that the name Grabal originated from a remark made by a traveler who observed that the same man was operating all the shops and stores in the settlement. He was trying to grab all the business. The post office remained in Jamestown until the railroad was completed from Milwaukee to Freeport in 1859. With the coming of the railroad, the villages of Davis in 1857, Rock City in 1858, and Dakota in 1859 sprung up. The early settlements of Rock Run Mills, Mount Pleasant, also known as Appleana, and Jamestown grab all, were abandoned. The majority of immigrants who settled here in Rock Grove and Rock Run Townships were from Germany, and the German language is widely used at this time. Add to your imagination, everyone in this area speaking German. Heute versammeln wir uns, um einen Blick auf unsere Vergangenheit zu werfen. Diese Vergangenheit ist ein Kaleidoskop von Versprechen und Misserfolgen, Sieben und Niederlagen. Glaube und Vertrauen in Gott und die Erfüllung seiner Verheißungen, wie Gott Joshua versprach, klammerten sich unsere Vorfahren an Gottes Verheißung. Doppelte Schrägstrich sei stark und mutig. Haben sie keine Angst oder verängstigt, weil der Herr, ihr Gott, mit ihnen geht. Er wird sie niemals verlassen und sie nicht verlassen. Die Leichen unserer Gründer wurden in ihre letzten Ruhestätten in St. Paul, Pionier, Filz und anderen Friedhöfen durch das Land gelegt, um auf den Auferstehung am Morgen zu warten. Blessit apete pure in Herd, vortei will se gut. Blessit apetuse wie ha a hunger in tirst vor richtiusnis, vortei will be fillet. Blessit apetuse wie ha um huren vortei will be comforted mai ju be blessit as wie walk trug te past and look at tire die wies in te 1800 s.
just a side note. <clears throat> that recording was from the 1940s, and it was sung by the Lohmeyer brothers, accompanied by Bill Lohmeyer's wife, Selma, on the organ. And it was sung at a, at a funeral. So we found that, and it's kind of a crude recording, but it's back for good 75 years. So we thought it was fun to share. At least eight of the 15 founding families were recorded to have arrived here in Rock Run Township, Stevenson County, Illinois, in 1847, while James Polk was in office. Heute versammeln wir uns. Whoops. <laughs> They met in their homes for worshiping because there was no church building, and services were conducted by laymen under the leadership of Herman V. Meyer as lay pastor. Franz Meyer, Henry Thorne, and Herman V. Meyer were named the first trustees of this new congregation. The group was designated as a German evangelical St. Paul's congregation. Let's look a little closer at the first three trustees. Franz Meyer, Germany in 1805, Franz was born. Thomas Jefferson is president in America. Franz was one of three boys. There was August, and we'll call him the first, Franz and Justice Meyer. August Meyer married Dorothea, or Dorothy Nina Meyer, and they had three children. Franz's brother Justice and his nephew August II passed away. Then in 1829, his brother August also died. Franz married his sister-in-law, Dorothy Meyer, that same year, creating a family of four. Later, Franz and Dorothy had three daughters. The family, Franz, Dorothy, and their five children came to America in 1847, and the German records show that their baptismal records were obtained for sailing to America on March 17th, of 1847. Franz purchased land here in section 15 of Rock Run Township, the farm just over the hill on the north. Actually, the property we are presently sitting on was part of this original purchase. Franz donated this land for the first church and cemetery. Now, can you imagine packing up, leaving your home and relatives, sailing across an ocean, traveling in a foreign country, have a daughter get married, finding a place to live, and worshiping together with your neighbors in your new home, thus creating a congregation all in one year. What a mighty God they served, what faith. Henry C., Franz's nephew slash stepson, is 27 years old when they came to America, and is also one of the founders. And we'll continue his story a little later. Wilhelmina Meyer, the Franz's niece slash stepdaughter, married Christoph Sleater in Milwaukee. Her obituary states that she was married in Milwaukee in the year of 1847 to Christoph Sleater. This leads us to believe that Meyer family probably came across America by the Erie Canal and the Great Lakes to arrive in Milwaukee. Could the Sleater and the Meyer family been on the same ship together? Louisa, Franz and Dorothy's first child, married Reverend Ernest Bine. Reverend Bine is the first traveling home missionary minister for this church, and he also served the Elroy and Freeport churches. Amelia married Frederick Heinrichs Meyer in 1853. Frederick is also considered one of the founders. Sophia married Fred Friedrich Rothman, who is also considered one of the founders. I believe you can call this church a family affair. Franz and Dorothy both passed away in 1874 here in Rock Run Township. Both are resting in St. Paul's Cemetery. And just a side note, remember Franz's brother, Justice, who died in Germany? had a son named Frederick, and he was married to Johanna Hageldorn, and they had four daughters. One of their daughters, Lena Meyer, and Frederick's granddaughter, Ella Raker, lived in Appleiana. Some of you might have known or heard of Ella and Lena. 
Frederick and his family arrived here in 1882, eight years after his uncle Franz passed away. This photo was taken by Ella Rager in 18, or 1928. And I thought it was a very cool picture and preserved, well preserved for almost 100 years here. Not far from it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Johann Heinrich Ludwig Thorne. Henry Thorne was born in 1795 in Lipodetmo. George Washington was the first president of America when he was born, and he was first married to Catherine Steinhagen, who died at a young age, leaving him with four daughters, and the youngest only seven months old. April of 1830, he marries Sophia Catherine Brinkmeyer, and to this union, six children were born in the years 1831 to 1844. In 1847, Heinrich and his wife and most of his 10 living children, some of them not by now grown and married, crossed the Atlantic Ocean. Upon arriving here in Stevenson County, they purchased land in sections eight and nine of Rock Run Township and joined with their countrymen in forming the German church. According to the 1870 Platt book, this land is located at the north edge of Rock Run Township and almost in the northwest corner. Our estimation is four to five miles from this church site. Remember, travel is by walking or by horses. Henry's youngest son, Gottlieb, and his wife, Minnie, had three children, Mary Thorne, who married Henry Telkemeyer, Lydia Thorne, who married David Knott, and John Thorne married Minnie Telkemeyer. John and Minnie had two children, Harold and Benita, some of you may remember Harold and Benita, and his, Harold Dorn and his sister, Benita Lincoln. John's obituary reads, John Thorne, a farmer residing near Rock City, passed away last evening at 5.45 o'clock at a local hospital, the cause of his death being appendicitis. He leaves two children, a daughter six years old, and a son of eight years, and one sister, Mrs. Henry Tilkemeyer of Rock City. His wife died about three years ago. John Thorne was born in Rock Run Township and died at the age of 39 years and 26 days. He was the son of a farmer and had been a farmer all of his life. He was married to Minnie Tilkemeyer, and to this union the two children were born. A sister of Mr. Thorne's, Mrs. David Knott, preceded him in death. Funeral services will be held on Monday at 12 o'clock noon at the home of the sister, Mrs. Henry Tilkemeyer at Rock City, and from there to St. Paul's Evangelical Church at Epliana, the Reverend Mr. Kurtz officiating. Burial will take place at Epliana Cemetery. Did you notice the newspaper did not print the date of the death or birth? His sisters are referred to by their husband's names, and the date of the funeral was omitted. This is quite common in this time period. Henry and Sophia Thorne their son Gottlieb, grandson John, and great-grandson Harold and their spouses are resting in St. Paul's Cemetery. Henry has other family members that are buried within Stevenson County. Friedrich Cord Hermann B. Meyer. Born in 1815, he was the son of Franz William and Dorothea Wil Wilhelmina B. Meyer in Germany. James Madison is president and novice. Herman married Sophia Brinkman, and they had a daughter, Dora. Three brothers, Herman, Frederick, and, the, and another brother, brought their wives and family on a sailing vessel to America in 1847. Dora is just a few weeks old. The unnamed brother died on board ship and was buried at sea. Herman kept his family aware of the difficulties, as well as the date of his crossing coming to America by saying, we were on the water 47 days and 47. A number of their relatives came later. When the ship finally reached New York, the Statue of Liberty was not there to welcome the weary travelers. There were then 29 states in the Union, and James Polk was president, and the final boundaries of the United States had just been fixed with the acquisition of California and Oregon, ter Oregon territories. The war with Mexico was ending. The journey from New York to Chicago was probably made by boat 
through the Great Lakes. Chicago then had a population of only 29,000. They might have made the journey from Chicago to Stevenson County on a returning grain wagon. In a Freeport paper at that time, there appeared ads like the following. Cash paid for hauling wheat to Chicago. 60 teams wanted immediately. Herman and his brother Frederick purchased land in Rock Run Township, section 19 and 30. Their homestead, which they lived together on, was four to five miles west southwest of the church and just a mile west of Jamestown. Through the years, they added more tracks to their position. The young immigrants found Rock Run a pleasant place for farming. There was an abundance of game and fruit. Swift streams afforded water power. Herman was the acting minister for the gathering German immigrants here in the Rock Run Township, as well as served as a trustee. Herman hauled grain in a wagon pulled by horses to Milwaukee and Chicago, where he received pro provisions in return instead of cash. Upon returning from one of these trips, as he was driving along, he was startled to notice that there were Indians lined up on each side of the road. He remained calm and kept going, and they did not stop him. Herman and Sophia had their second child, a son, whom they named Frederick, born in 1850. Brother Frederick and his wife Dorothea had a son, Henry, whom they named, who was born about 1849, and a daughter, Minna, in 1854, who died in infancy. An epidemic of Asianic cholera hit the county in 1850 and again in 1852. The B. Meyer families had escaped the epidemic. However, when the cholera returned in 1854, Frederick and his wife, Dorothea, succumbed to cholera on the same day, January 6th. Herman and Sophia took little Henry to rear with their own two children, Frederick, Dorothea, and Minna, arresting in St. Paul's Cemetery. Freeport's great historical event, the Lincoln-Douglas debate, happened in 1858, 11 years after arriving in Illinois. Herman's wife, Sophia Louise, passed away in January of that same year. Sophia Louise was buried in St. Paul's Cemetery. This left Herman to raise Dora, Frederick, and his nephew, Henry, both about eight. The following January of 1859, Herman marries Sophia Grenwald, and the ceremony was conducted by Reverend Cronkey, the second pastor of St. Paul Church. Herman and Sophia are buried in V. Meyer Cemetery. The cemetery was renamed Pioneer Cemetery in 1937 and is located on a farm school road between Rock City Road and Highway 75. That's a brief look at our first trustees. Now on to our remaining founders. Henry C. Meyer, born in Germany of 1820, James Monroe's president in here America. He came to America in 1847 with his family. Henry purchased 180 acres of land in Rock Run Township, Section 10. This land lies next to the northwest corner of Francis Farm. He married Barbara Weber in 1848. And let's take a peek into Barbara's life. She was born in a village in France. At the age of eight, in 1838, her family immigrated to America. <clears throat> Nine years prior to the Meyer family, the family walked over 200 miles to get to the ship in Burma Haven. Their journey from there took them seven weeks just to cross the ocean. And while in transit, they were robbed of some of their money. Our ancestors' journey was not for the faint of heart. Only faith carried them through. Henry C. and Barbara had 11 children. Nine of the 11 children were farmers or married farmers. The other two, Fred and Sophia, their occupations we did not uncover. Henry C. and Barbara passed away in 1907, and both are resting in St. Paul Cemetery. Heinrich Hofmeister, born in Germany in 1807 as Jürgen Heinrich Friedrich Platina, and he married Sophia 
Hofmeister, and because of the laws at the time regarding land in Germany, he took the last name of his wife, which was Hofmeister. And they had six children. Sophia died about 1846, and Heinrich married Ernestine Henrichsmeyer in 1847. Henry and Ernestine came to America after 1847 with six children and an infant son, George. Hofmeister's ocean crossing vessel docked in New Orleans, and there the family boarded a Mississippi River boat. The older girls, Louise, Wilhelmina, Sophia, and possibly Frederica, had a terrifying experience in one of the Mississippi River towns in the south. The boat had docked for repairs, and as it was quite some time before it was able to proceed, the girls were allowed to walk around on shore. They noticed a mob of people up the street and attracted to the shouting and excitement, they made their way right to the scene of a lynching. The horrifying sight of someone being hanged, surrounded by a mob of angry people, so terrified the girls, who were between the ages of seven and 13. They were unable to sleep for a long time thereafter. The riverboat took the family to Galena, and from there they no doubt rode on wagons to the settlement with people from Lepidetmo who had come before them. The Hofmeister family settled in Rock Grove Township, Section 6, on a farm just southeast of the village of Rock Grove. In 1852, Henry's eighth child, Henry C., was the first to be born in America. A total of seven girls and six boys were born to Henry and his two wives. You will note on line 10 of that church registry, it records Carl August born August, October 12th of 1858 and baptized in December of 18 of 1858. But by the time the census report, his name was changed to Charles and his headstone is engraved as Charles. So you see our name problems. <laughs> September of 1874, Heinrich and his wife, Ernestine, were coming home from a Sunday afternoon visit at the Rock City School Railroad Crossing. Their team of horses were frightened by a train and ran away. Heinrich was severely injured. The newspaper reported the accident. Mr. Hofmeister was unconscious when first found and continued in that state until last Monday when he died. The deceased was an old and most respected citizen of Rock Grove Township, where he had resided for many years. By industry, economy, and hard work, he had amassed quite a fortune. He was a German, born at Meinberg, Germany. His age was 67 years and five months. He was a devoted member of the German church at Appleana, where he was buried on last Tuesday. The funeral was very largely attended by the friends and neighbors of the deceased. Excerpts from Mrs. Hofmeister's obituary reads, Mrs. Christine Hofmeister, aged 84 years and five months, died Wednesday morning. Cause of death was a stroke of paralysis received two weeks previous to her death, from which she never rallied. She was of a quiet disposition and always ready to help the poor and needy. Henry and Ernestine are buried or resting in St. Paul's Cemetery. God never promises blue skies, but to see one through our troubled times, God is faithful. Christoph Sleater, brother to Henry the I and Wilhelmina Sleater. Christoph was born in Germany. James Monroe is the fifth president in the United States in 1820, and he arrived in Milwaukee in 1847 with his brother Heinrich and his sister Wilhelmina. Wilhelmina married Conrad Nagelmeyer, and Conrad immigrated after the Sleaters in 1854. Christoph married Amelia Wilhelmina Meyer, the daughter of Dorothy and August the First Meyer, and stepdaughter of our niece of Franz Meyer. At the age of 25, she came to America, making her home for a short time in Milwaukee, where she was united in marriage in the year of 1847 to Mr. Christoph Sleater. In the same year, they came to Rock Run Township, making their home there and remained 
for the rest of their lives. They came to Stevenson County and purchased 86 acres of land in Rock Run Township, Section 10. By 1880, they owned 361 acres. Chris and Amelia had five children. Christoph and Amelia, great-grandson, Edwin Uddy was ordained into Christian ministry on June 20th of 1949 here at St. Paul. This is our first pastoral calling from St. Paul Church. Christoph took his own life. German custom or belief is that it is an abomination to take one's own life, and thus they did not allow them to be buried in the church cemetery. Actually, Suicide victims were buried in the church cemeteries, but their graves remained unmarked. This is true in Germany and here at St. Paul in the formative years. Mr. Sleater is buried in Phelps Cemetery with a marked grave. Quoting Amelia's obituary. Amelia Schleter was a member of St. Paul's Church in Epliana since 1847, the year in which the church was organized. She was at all times a devoted and faithful member, never tiring to do all in her power for the welfare of her church. She was the last of the charter members of St. Paul Church to be called to the heavenly home. The funeral services were held at the home and church in Apliana on Wednesday, January 20th, the Reverend C.A. Heidberg officiating. Burial in St. Paul Cemetery. Heinrich Sleder, Lipodetmal, Germany of 1822, Heinrich was born. Amelia Elizabeth Schrader, family immigrated to America the same year that she was born in 1828. Our church records re refer to Amelia by the name of Elizabeth. By arriving in 18, after arriving in 1847, Heinrich married Amelia Wilhelmina Elizabeth Schrader in 1850 and they became owners of land in Section 10, a Rock Run Township, and by 1880, they owned 140 acres of land. Heinrich and Elizabeth were blessed with nine children. You might notice Carl Frederick and his sister Minnie had a double wedding and each married a sister and brother. Henry and Elizabeth's great-great-great-grandson, Justin Sleater, was ordained into Christian ministry here in St. Paul Church on November 12th of 2017. This is the third pastoral calling from this congregation. Henry and Elizabeth are resting in St. Paul Cemetery. Philip Holstey. Philip came to America in 1847. Whether he married Caroline here in Germany or America, we did not find. Using the 1859 Platt book, we found Philip owning land in Rock Grove Township, Section 4. Today, this would be on Rock City Road, north of Pleasant View Road. Um, later, in 1871, he sold this property and acquired land in Rock Run Township in Section 16 and 17. The church membership of 1876 listed the family with seven children. Louise married Fred Kohler. Her obituary states she lived her early years in Rock Grove vicinity. The late 1800s, she moved to Freeport and she was buried in the Freeport Cemetery. Caroline married and is listed in her sister's obituary as Mrs. Memler of Taft, California. Henry married and he and his wife, Minnie, also lived in the Freeport area. They too are buried in the Freeport Cemetery. Fred? Fred Holstey, 78, well-known farmer and native of Rock Run Township, died about two o'clock this morning in a Freeport hospital where he had been confined but three days. He was born in Rock Run Township, December 10th, 1858, and spent his entire lifetime in that community. He is survived by one brother, William Holstey of Rock City. Mr. Holstey never married. William married Mary Hightacker. They had one son, Harry. The family farm was passed down through the generations, Philip to William to Harry to Melvin to Brian. Harry's oldest son, Harold Hosty, Philip and Caroline's great-grandson, was ordained June 11th of 1967 
here in St. Paul, and the second minister raised in this church and called by God, what a heritage. By 1900, the Freeport newspaper reported on area citizens, and we found this article. Philip Holstey was born in Germany 85 years ago on the 12th of last December and came to this country in 1847 and has been living in Rock Run Township ever since. Mr. Holstey has been a very industrious man, an honest and upright citizen, retiring in his nature and devoted to his home. Mrs. Holstey is 75 years old and still living. They have five children, Louisa, Caroline, Henry, Fred, and William. His vacation has been that a farmer and is that of a farmer in which he has been very prosperous and is still quite vigorous for one of his age. The Holstey family are among the most respected people of the county. On Wednesday, August 11, 1905, a Freeport Daily Bulletin reported, William Holstey is putting in spare time hauling his winter's wood so as to be ready for corn husking. Can you imagine? cutting wood with hand saws, splitting with wedges and sledgehammer, and picking corn, acres and acres of corn by hand. The Freeport Daily Bulletin of February 16, 1905 reported, Mrs. Philip Holsty died at the family home one mile north of here on Saturday night at the age of 83 years. The deceased was one of the first settlers in this part of the county and had been a faithful wife, mother, and friend. She had only been sick only a short time. The funeral was held at the Apolliana Church where her husband and herself worshiped. Philip and Caroline are resting in St. Paul's Cemetery. Friedrich Henrichs Meyer. Amelia Meyer was 14 years old when she crossed the ocean in 1847 with her parents, Franz and Dorothy Meyer. Friedrich was born in Germany in 1828, and Friedrich came to America in July of 1848. Noted in his obituary, the journey was a stormy one and required seven weeks. About 1852, he married Amelia Meyer, the second daughter of Franz and Dorothy. And in 1871, Platt book shows F. Henrichs Meyer in Rock Grove Township, Section 5, as owner. Between membership, burial, and the Meyer genealogy records, there appears, appears to be numerous children born to this union. Hannah recalls her father, Frederick, saying, when he saw that black-eyed daughter, Amelia of Franz Meyer, he knew that she was the girl for him. Excerpts from Frederick's obituary reads, Frederick Hendricks Meyer, a resident four miles north of Rock City, died at his home Sunday at 11.20 a.m. Old age and heart trouble was the cause of his death. His age was 80 years, and he had been a resident of this county for over 30 years. He leaves his wife and six daughters and two sons to mourn his departure. The funeral will be held at the house Wednesday, and the burial will be at the Epiliana Cemetery. Reverend Norreth will preach the sermon. Friedrich passed away March of 1908 and Amelia in 1914, and both are buried in St. Paul's Cemetery. Most of their children are also buried here. Now, 1849, our first church stone structure was built with stone from area quarries. And in 1850, the Bethlehem Church was erected in Rock Grove Township, the corner of Egger and Pleasant View Roads. Congress issued the first federal land grants for the development of the U.S. Railroad. Wilhelm Christian Heinrich Klepping. Henry is born in Germany. A 16-week journey landed him in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1848. And traveling up the Mississippi River, he stayed a couple of years in St. Louis, Missouri before heading to Illinois. Here, he married the widow, Sophia Friedrich Frederica Otto, thus acquiring the land of Conrad Otto. He purchased additional land for $6 an acre. His farm was in Section 4 and 33 of Rock Grove Township. That's off of the Rock Grove Road and between Eggert and Rock City Roads today. 
and Frederica died in February of 1869. He married again in, on April 4th of 1869 to Henrietta Dickman. Henry was a farmer and a stonemason. He held school offices and attended the evangelical church. Henry volunteered for the Civil War, but was never called to serve. Henry and Henrietta had three children. Excerpts from her obituary reads. Mrs. Klepping was born in Lippe Detmold, Germany. She emigrated to Illinois in 1869 and was married to Henry Klepping the same year. Besides the children, she leaves to mourn her loss, her husband, now 85 years old, one brother residing at Evansville, Indiana, and one sister living in Germany. She early united with the German Lutheran Church at Epliana, Illinois, and remained a faithful and consistent Christian. She was always kind and thoughtful, and always ready to assist those in need, and many are the kind acts that will be rem remembered by her recipients. A large concourse of people attended the funeral held from the late residence on Sunday, February 26. The services were conducted by the Reverend William Roth of the German Lutheran Church. William Minard had charge of the funeral and the following acted as pallbearers. Fred Niedemeyer, Fred Schrademeyer, Henry Tilkemeyer, Jacob Meinzer, Gottlieb Thorne, and Conrad Weimer. Frederica Henri Henrietta and Henry are resting in St. Paul Cemetery. In 1852, M Mildred Fillmore was president. This book, Immigrants from Lipidentmal Area in Germany to the United States, is an English translation of, of ship's logs starting about 1846 to 1896. In the year of 1852, the ship Diana carried three of our founding families to Philadelphia, America. They arrived on August 5th of 1852. We are wondering if the church was founded in 1847, how did these families get included as part of the original 15 families? William Welling, he was born in 1820 in Loth, Germany, son of Christoph and Charlotte Catherine Kohler Welling. In Germany, he married Amelia Catherine Louise Niesmeyer, and they were blessed with four children. William, his wife, and three children, and his father, Christoph Welling, set sail in 1852 on the ship Diana. They arrived on August 5th of 1852 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, from the village of Loth, Germany. The Wellings settled in Rock Grove Township, Section 1, about five miles north of Rock Run Mills. And you'll note that Log Cabin is a picture of their first home. Louis, William's wife, Louise, died October of 1856. In January of 1857, he married Louisa Elizabeth Henzi, and by 1880, they purchased a farm northeast of Dakota, Additional children were born to this union. Wednesday, August 7, 1878, Freeport Journal reported the following. The farmers have nearly completed cutting their grain through the northern and eastern portion of the county. It has been a severe task to gather much of the oats as they were lodged by the storms so that they had to be cut all one way. The harvest is the best one, all things considered, that we have had since 1860 and the corn crop never promised better than at present. Among the improvements, I noticed the following. North and east of Dakota, a fine two-story frame dwelling, 18 by 28, built by Conrad Henson. Also by William, William Welling, a very fine bank barn, 40 by 68, with all the modern improvements. And a little west of Rock Grove, Mr. David Rocky is just finishing a very substantial bank barn, 38 by 52. Farmers cry hard times, but to anyone traveling through the country, beholding the vast fields of grain on every hand, now nearly secured, I must say surely good times are at hand. So mote it be, Rambler. Louise died in May of 1906, and her obituary said she was a daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Conrad Hensey. In 1857, she was married to William Welling. 
Some years ago, they purchased a farm in Dakota Township, where they have lived ever since. By industry and frugality, they accumulated more than a competency. Mrs. Welling was a good neighbor, a loving wife, and an indulgent mother. She was confirmed in her childhood and united with the Evangelical Lutheran Church at Epliana, of which the communion she was consistent and a faithful member to the end of her life. She leaves an aged husband and eight children. The funeral was largely attended and took place from her late residence on June 1st at nine o'clock, and the remains were interred in the Appleiana Cemetery. William died December 22nd, 1911. He was buried on Tuesday, December 29th at the German St. Paul Church in Appleiana, of which he was a faithful member for the past 60 years. Reverend Daniel Bierbaum officiated. Although it was a stormy day, there was a large attendance at the funeral. Christoph Miller. Christoph and Amelia came on the ship, uh, came to America in 1815, 1852, and are recorded on the ship's log of Diana. Christoph is listed as a carpenter on that log, and Amelia Leesman, 23, is listed just before Christoph on that log. Christoph married Amelia Emma Leesman in 1853 here in Stevenson County. They were blessed with six children. The 1871 plat book shows Christoph owning land in sections 16 and 17 of Rock Run Township. According to the Stevenson County History Book of 1970, Christoph Miller was in the Henzie School District. Could they have rented a place in this area before moving north of Rock City? The census lists Christoph as a farmer here in Illinois. From carpenter to farmer, skills exercised for life. Christoph and Amilla, Am Emma are resting in St. Paul Cemetery. Friedrich Christian Puthaus. The Puthaus family also sailed on the ship named Diana in 1852. The ship's log listed Frederick, he was 58 and Willow Medium, 49, and seven other Puthas, all from the village of Loth, Germany, and going to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They arrived on August 5th of 1852 in the port of Call, Philadelphia. The five adult male occupations are listed as blacksmith. We have determined Frederick, age 27, and Simon, age five, are father and son. On the same ship with her brother Ludwig was Wilhelmina Schrodermeyer, who is also likely the same Wilhelmina who married Friedrich Christian later that year in the United States. And according to the history of Stevenson County of 1880, Friedrich II, eldest son, settled in section 33 of Stevenson County that same year. And, but a little later, he sold out, and he bought a farm containing 118 acres, valued at $50 an acre, in Section 20 of Rock Run Township. Five children were born to Friedrich II and Wilhelmina. Simon, born in Germany, was married in 1868 and had four sons before he passed away from pneumonia in 1879. His widow remarried three years later and moved to Nebraska. All six of Frederick's and Wilhelmina's children are resting in St. Paul Cemetery. Wilhelmina passed away in May and Frederick in September of 1890. Fred's obituary reads, Fred Puthast, one of the old residents of this county, passed away at his home a few miles east of Rock Grove, Sunday forenoon at nine o'clock. Death was caused by a complication of diseases. He was nearly 80 years old. Mrs. Puthast, wife of the deceased, passed away a few months ago. No children are left, but two grandchildren are bowed down with sorrow. The funeral occurred this afternoon at the German Evangelical Church at Epliana. Reverend Mr. Hoffmeister officiating. As a parent, can you imagine burying all of your children? Proverbs 30, 15b and verse 16. There are three things that never are satisfied. 
Four that's never say enough, the grave, the barren wound, land which never is satisfied with water, and fire which never says enough. Conrad Meyer. In 1871, plat maps show Conrad Meyer with land in Rock Run Township, Section 7, and Rock Grove Township, Section 5 and 6. June of 1848, Conrad married Caroline, and the church registry of 1876 lists six children, but the legibility is questionable. The 1870 census lists five children, and the sixth child died in infancy. Sometime after the death of Caroline Anna, the family moved to Chandler, South Dakota. We have found no records here for this family. Caroline and Conrad are resting in Chandler Reformed Cemetery, South Dakota. The census reported that Conrad was born in Lipidentmal, Germany, so this leads us with questions. Are they related to the Franz Meyer family? Did Conrad and Caroline come to, when did the Conrad and Caroline come to America? Frederick Rothman. Frederick Rothman was born in Germany in about 1815, and according to the 18th census report, his occupation was a boot and shoemaker. His home was in Rock Run Township, Stevenson County, Illinois, and he married Sophia Meyer, the youngest daughter of Franz and Dorothy Meyer. The 1876 membership list in the church reports lists the first four children. And by 1877, they are living in the state of Oregon. The 1880 census list added two more children. Hannah and John are also listed in the Meyer genealogy book. The census lists this, his occupation as a farmer at that time. Frederick, Sophia, and all the family are buried in Riverview Cemetery Portland, Oregon. This concludes the peek into our founding fathers and mothers' lives of 175 years or so ago. The story does not end there. We are here today to carry on the work of our Lord. What legacy will we leave for our descendants? Will they testify to our faithfulness to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings? So at this time, if you are a descendant, if you picked out any one of these families or several of these families. If you're a descendant, would you mind standing? Okay, good show, thank you. Now to put these things into perspective a little better, let's look going forward, 1854, the German Evangelical St. Paul Church called their first official pastor. In 1860, the Stone Church was expanded 22 feet, the parochial school started, and the teacher hired. Now the interesting thing about the teacher's job requirements included playing the organ and leading choir. 1861, Abraham Lincoln became President of the United States. Civil War between the states began in 1861 and ended in 1865. 1869, the first bell was purchased for $100 and the first pipe organ purchased for $400. eighteen seventy one the great chicago fire eighteen eighty four the statue of liberty donated to the united states from france in eighteen eighty five the wood frame church was built eighteen eighty six the statue of liberty dedicated eighteen ninety two to nineteen twenty four ellis island immigration and naturalization was opened 1912, the parochial school term was shortened to summer months, and in 1923, the parochial school discontinued. 1944, German services changed to English. So I wasn't joking when we heard German, that's all they heard. <laughs> 1952, they remodeled the interior, 
of the Frame Church. In 1858, the stone church was dismantled. 1859, decision to build an educational wing onto the Frame Church. And we found, thanks to Lonnie Slater, found these draft drawings, I guess I would call them. I don't, I was too young to know what they had decided at that time, at that annual meeting. But just within weeks, the Frame Church burned to the ground. So at this time, I'd like to say a big thank you to Sherry for her diligent search into census records, newspaper articles, and so much more. Sue Ann Bamberg and Anne Marie Kane for their technology expertise, to the Myers, Sleater, and B. Meyer families who shared their family records, and to all who have helped, and especially to all of you for sharing this day with us. Please join us for refreshments and fellowship before you leave this place. And if you want to stand for the benediction, Der Herr segne dich und behalte dich. Der Herr lässt sein Gesicht auf dich leuchten und dir gnädig sein. Der Herr dreht sein Gesicht zu dir und gebe dir Frieden.